As you've listened to these lectures, I'm sure you've noticed that I try to treat video and tabletop games together and not act as though they were fundamentally different. Because they're not. The difference is not in whether it's on a computer or in paper. And of course we see that especially nowadays when so many games have been converted one way or the other from tabletop to video or video to tabletop. The difference is in the opposition, not in the media. It's not between electronic and non-electronic, or what I call video and tabletop. It's in the nature of the opposition. Is the opposition human, or is it programmed? Even the best computer AI which is a, a incorrect term. It stands for artificial intelligence, and there's no intelligence in computer opponents. Even the best computer opponent is much worse as a player than a good human player, unless the game is only about speed of reaction. And of course, a tabletop game can have a programmed opponent. It's just that the programming can't be very complex because the players have got to cope with it. So solitaire tabletop games and many cooperative tabletop games do have programmed opponents. The players are against the game, not against other players. By the way, please don't use the words digital and analog for video and tabletop games. Digital does not mean electronic. It means separate rather than continuous, and analog means continuous. Dice are digital. So what does this mean for the designer? In games with human opposition, the designer is devising interesting ways for the players to challenge one another. In games without human opposition, the designer arranges ways for the game as an extension of the designer himself or herself to challenge the player. Those are two very different things. Human opposition is infinitely unpredictable and resourceful. You can only put so much into a program. So single-player games, whether they're computerized or not, tend to be puzzles. Though some of the computer opponents that now exist are perhaps too complex for us to call them puzzles. Single-player games at least the puzzle kind, have solutions. And in many cases, it's an always correct solution. And of course, there are some two-player games that always have correct solutions. For example, chess or checkers, because there's no hidden information and no uncertainty other than the intentions of the other player. Well, Single-player games may be created to be unbeatable, like arcade games, or they may be beaten, and then the player has a solution and can do a speed run where he runs through the game in five or ten minutes that took him many hours originally, because he now has the solution. So many people beat the game and then they don't play anymore. This never happens with a good game involving human opposition. Unless it's a very weak game, such as Tic-Tac-Toe or Candyland, then human opposition can't make much difference. Candyland is entirely random. Tic-Tac-Toe is always a draw when played perfectly. And you can write down in one page how to play perfectly. And keep in mind, puzzles have always been more popular than games. Single-player video games tend to be puzzles. Euro-style tabletop games, sometimes called multiplayer solitaire, tend to be puzzles. Puzzles are more popular because, one, you can't lose to a puzzle. And two, there's no competition with the puzzle. You don't put your ego on the line. 